Okay, so here we have a model of the lumbar spine. And you already noticed the kind of spindly nerve roots coming out. Here we're looking from the front and we can see the L4 vertebra and the L5 vertebra. And in between them, the L4, L5 disc. If we turn it round so we're looking from the back, we'll see something that's a little bit familiar from the pictures that we've been looking at so far. Although now we can see that the spinous process is in and the ligamentum flavum is in there as well. So that's obscuring our view of the fecal sac from the back. And in a second we'll take it out so we can look at it more closely. So that's kind of what it looks like in situ, what we've just been looking at. You'll notice the nerve roots of the corda equina here, these little blue sp blue uh, things here. And you'll notice at each side, uh, sort of at each lumbar level, you've got a pair of nerve roots branching off. And they'll head down into the bum and into the leg. If we look from the top, we can have a nice visualization of what the corda equina looks like. A nice view of the disc there, which we'll obviously come to in the future. But you can see kind of the individual nerve roots of the corda equina there in blue. And if we look from the bottom, so we're looking from the sacrum up, you see the corda equina there as well. Of course, there's fewer nerve roots by the time we get to this level because two, four, six, eight have already branched off. Let's take one last look at everything together. In fact, what I'll also do is show you a little, we're going to talk about the disc later, but just since we're here to show you what happens when a disc herniates, you can see the nerve root kind of poking out through the hole there that's called the intervertebral foramen. And if someone bends, you can see that the disc herniates there. Let's see if we can get a better angle of that. That disc herniation pressing the nerve root. And we can see how it's going to disturb it and injure it. It's actually quite a far lateral disc herniation. Usually they're a little bit further into the middle. Okay, let's take out the neural structures. Get rid of that. So this will be a bit more familiar, kind of alien looking thing. We've got the fecal sac. And as we said in the email, look, these, these nerve roots of the corda equina are pretty well protected in there. They've got a lot of kind of room to move around. You know, that's why corda equina syndrome is so rare. But when they're out here, they're a little bit more vulnerable to disc herniations and arthritis and that kind of thing, which we'll come to in a second or in future emails. This, as you probably know, these kind of swellings here are the dorsal root ganglia. So they contain the cell bodies for the individual sensory neurons. Everything beyond the dorsal root ganglia is technically not nerve root, that's spinal nerve. And I don't think we need to worry too much about that for now. The interesting thing that I always think is that, you know, everything that we're talking about in the mini course, everything that we talk about when we talk about normal sort of single root radicular pain happens be behind, uh, like between this bit where a sensory and a motor nerve root branch off to kind of go their own way and this bit when they're outside the spinal column. So between the part where two of these little roots in the corda equina go their own way, branch off this kind of very short uh, space here of nerve root before it exits the spinal column is the vulnerable bit where everything that we're talking about happens. So I hope that's helped a little bit. Uh, let me know what you think.